We're back now with the former National Security Advisor for President Obama, uh, Tom Donlin. Mr. Donlin, uh, welcome to Good Face to the here, Nation. I want to go first to uh, what uh, Chairman Rogers was saying about the Russians may have had some sort of a hand in these disclosures by Edward Snowden. And now, all of this came uh, just as you were leaving the White House. Yeah. Did you have any indication that the Russians might be mixed up in this in some way? I don't. I don't want. I don't want to get into details about what I knew. What I didn't know when I left when I left the White House about this. But I do think it's fair uh, to uh, say that there needs to be a thorough investigation of exactly how Snowden received this information, how he was able to download it, transport it, and what exactly happened along the way. I do think that that's a fair question. It needs to be thoroughly investigated. We've had a lot of discussion here about the programs and about the disclosures that he's made. But it is a fair point to say we need a thorough investigation as to as exactly how Snowden came to. Uh, come of well, these wouldn't that? Well, I mean, wouldn't that be uh, almost obvious? I mean, wouldn't you want to? Wouldn't there be a thorough investigation there, already I think, underway? I think, I think there is an investigation underway, and, it need, and, and, and to point out the, to send this score to what the chairman Rogers said, it needs, it needs to be thorough. It needs to look into all the angles. Do you think we are pursuing Snowden himself aggressively enough? I think we did. Yes. You know, and he's he's. Uh, I do. I do think so. Do you agree with those who say maybe we should offer him some sort of amnesty in order to get him back here? Absolutely not. I don't see any reason uh, for that to happen. As a matter of fact, I'd be strongly against that. Snowden's done great damage to the United States uh, across a range of dimensions. Uh, he had a lot of options here to raise uh, issues that he might have had about these programs, uh, and I've been in no way would be for amnesty or clemency. For, would you for call Snowden. him a traitor? I would call him a traitor, yes. You would call him yes. a traitor. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what the president proposed and didn't propose in his speech Friday about reforming the uh, NSA. Uh, do you think they should be reined in? Well, reined in, I, I think I, 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 uh, I'd argue with the, with the premise of your question of the way you phrased the question. The backdrop here is really important. The programs that have been disclosed and were discussed by the president in his speech on Friday uh, were fully authorized by the Congress, overseen by the courts, and tightly overseen within the executive branch. This is not an example that you and I might remember from the 1970s, for example, you had, where you had illegal yeah. and rogue programs that were uh, uh, discovered by the Church Committee and where you had real reform after that. That's not this case. These programs were fully visible to Let the Congress. Let me just ask you this. Do you agree with Senator Udall, who says there have been abuses? Uh, people like Mike Rogers say there have been no abuses. I don't yes, there were capabilities, but yeah. there have been no abuses. I think what this discussion is about is, is emphatically not about abuses. And indeed, the President's Review Commission found no evidence of abuse of these programs. Uh, but what this is about is the technology, the power of the technology, and the future and about how to ensure that these programs operate consistent with our values and in ways that give confidence to both uh, people in the United States and around the world that they're being operated in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in an appropriate way. So I don't, I don't think there have, that, that's an important context here. We, we don't have, to have evidence of abuses here. What we're talking about here is dealing with the capabilities, the potential of these great technologies and ensuring that things get done in a way consistent with our values. I want to ask you about the report the Senate Intelligence Committee put out uh, last week. Uh, it really excoriated the State Department for its role in not providing enough security for the uh, Benghazi uh, consulate, concluded the attack uh, that left four Americans dead could have actually been preventable. You were the uh, National Security yeah. Advisor at the time. Do you agree with their conclusion? I think the report's a good report, and it, uh, I think it's done a real service, Bob, frankly, uh, because it's a bipartisan report. Uh, signed up by all the members of the committee. They had some additional views that they added to it, but the core of the report is a bipartisan report that reviews in a thorough way the events at Benghazi. It provides a number of very important recommendations, which I think are in, in the main quite sound and need to be pursued. And really importantly, in addition to looking forward, it also looked backward and I think really dealt with a number of the uh, concerns and conspiracy theories, frankly, that were out there about what happened uh, that night in Benghazi, particularly as to whether or not the government did everything it could uh, to try to, uh, to save our, our, our colleagues there. Let me ask you about this new book that uh, former Defense Secretary Robert Gates has written. He yeah. came down pretty hard on you at, yeah. in various places. Uh, he also revealed many private conversations uh, with the President. What's your overall reaction? Well, my reaction to the, uh, to the book is that basically that a lot of the press reports have actually been uh, uh, not consistent with the, with the thorough reading of the book, number one. Number two, I uh, would remark that Secretary Gates and I spent hundreds of hours together. Uh, and the important thing, I think, that comes out of the book is the substance and the decisions that the president made. So, for example, 
Secretary Gates talks about the really the difficult process we had in working through Afghan policy, but at the end says he agrees with every decision the president made. Well, he suggested that at some points the president has sent men into battle when he did, really didn't believe in the mission. Now, that's a pretty tough charge. Yeah. Well, that, and that's not true. Uh, you know, the president came to office, reviewed Afghan policy, um, uh, narrowed our goals, stated them clearly, tripled the number of forces in Afghanistan, and now has us on a way to completing that mission by the end of this year. That's just not, that, 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 uh, I, don't, I don't think that's fair. And I think a fair reading of the book really doesn't come to that, doesn't well, come to that conclusion. And indeed, Bob, you know, if you uh, spend a, uh, a time in these, uh, in these discussions, um, it's not unusual for policymakers to ask hard questions, to raise concerns, to surface doubts. And indeed, you as a citizen should want your president and the most senior officials in the government well, to ask hard questions and to raise doubts, and you need space for that. He accused you of being particularly disrespectful to military leaders, citing your, quote, suspicious and sometimes condescending and insulting questioning of our military leaders. Yeah, let me raise, I'll say three things in response to that. Um, one is I have the deepest respect for the military and work with the military very closely over a four and a half year period, as you know. Uh, number two, Gates says, and again, it's important to read the whole book, says uh, d during the course of his uh, uh, relationship with me, it became very strong uh, and a very solid working relationship. And he was talking about one instance there at the, at the, at the outset. But I want to repeat, though, uh, I think that you and citizens around this country, and indeed, and indeed a fair reading of history, you'd want to have your most senior national security officials asking the hardest questions. And indeed, if you read recent books that have come out, for example, on President Bush's uh, administration, uh, and Peter Baker's fine book, uh, if you read uh, uh, studies of the Vietnam era, uh, you would want to have the tough questions asked. Tom Donnelly. Thank you so much. Hope to see you again. And right. we'll be back with some personal thoughts in a second.